Yo, what's good YouTube, man? It's Gabe with another fan TV. Back at you another video. Like the content in this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Also, go ahead and comment down below your thoughts on the video. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, man. Ravens content coming at you uh, pretty much on a daily basis. We're going to try to keep that up if we can, all right? But look, man, the Ravens um, got some great news yesterday. Ravens fans got some great news yesterday, I have to say. Uh, Adam Schefter said that Eric B. Enemy is still a prime, prime candidate for the offensive of coordinator position for the Ravens and for the commanders as well, okay? Now, this is great news. Uh, you know, we got to start off right there. Uh, it's kind of surprising to me just because the fact that I thought that Eric B. Enemy will be looking for more head coaching jobs. And the reason I say that is because, now, I was the Ravens have been connected with Airbnb for the last week, week and a half, but then another report came out and said, well, no, he's more looking for head coaching jobs. He's not really looking for a lateral move. So when I saw that, I was like, all right, it's not happening. It was a great dream, a great thought, but it's not going to happen, all right? But then Adam Schefter puts out this report, this tweet, and he has great sources around the league. We know Adam Schefter breaks news all the time, right? Saying that, no, he's still a prime candidate. So, that's, we got to talk about it. You know, it's something that could very well happen. So, um, every game over the last five seasons has had a top five offense every single year. Um, let's see. Um, I got the stat right here. So, for 2018, they were first. 2019, they were fifth. 2020, they were first. 2021, they were third. And this season, they were first. So, <laughs> a prolific, high-powered offense, always in the top five in total offense, always scoring a lot of points. Uh, always almost looking unstoppable no matter who's out there. And we got to give that credit to, obviously, the players. They got they had great players. They had the had Tyree Kills. They still got Travis Kelsey. And obviously, they got Patrick Mahomes, okay? But the scheme, the play calling goes a lot into that. And I think the reason that Eric Bambi could be a guy looking to make a lateral move to another offensive coordinator position is simply because he gets knocked because they don't know how much is it is it him and how much is it Andy Reid, right? So, if he was to come here, it would be unequivocally Eric B. Enemy's offense. There'd be no doubt about who's calling the plays, who's scheming up the offense, um, who's putting these players in the best position to win. It would obviously be Eric B. Enemy, right? Now, so if that's the case, it makes sense why he would want to make a move that's not a head coaching job if he's not getting those kind of offers. Say, okay, well, look, I'm going to go somewhere else, prove myself again, which he really shouldn't even have to, but I'm going to prove myself again and show you that my offense is a part of why the Chiefs have been so successful. It's why, you know, Patrick Mahomes can come out as kind of as, as a raw prospect and turn into a superstar quarterback, right? So if that's the case, it makes sense that Eric Enemy will be interested in a job like Baltimore and a job like Washington. Now, um, I'm hoping that it does happen. And if those are the main two positions that he's looking at, I think that the Ravens have to look more enticing, more intriguing, in my opinion, all right? You got a better quarterback in place. You got a better team in place. Um, now, listen, I know he, Lamar is not technically in place just yet. You know, got the, some things have to be worked out. But if I'm Eric and if, if I'm considering the Ravens, Lamar Jackson has to be a part of the equation, right? Because I'm not going to leave a team with a superstar quarterback to go to a team that has no quarterback or or has a question mark at QB, right? So if that's the case, then that leads to a very exciting offseason, right? You got Lamar Jackson here in place, and then you also you're going to attack the wide receiver position, whether it's draft, free agency, or trade, and maybe uh, multiple avenues at that. Um, because you got if you're going to bring Airbnb in, you got to give him his tools to be successful. And that's going to be adding to the wide receiver room. Everywhere else in the Ravens is pretty good. Offensive line, you got to figure out left guard, but other than that, it's pretty solid. Running back room is pretty good. Now, we'll see what happens with Gus Edwards if he happens to be um, a cap casualty or anything like that. But, you know, hopefully that doesn't have to happen. But we'll see on that end. But still, the Ravens have a really good running back room. All right. Uh, tight end room is good. Like, you know, we got Andrews, got Likely. You know, even Kolar showed some things. But, you know, mainly just Andrews and Likely, right? So, to me, this, that would be an exciting start to the offseason. That means that the Ravens are going to commit to the offensive side of the ball. Because Eric Bambi is not going to come here to a team that's not going to commit to having weapons out there. It's just not going to happen, right? Because he wants to show and prove that, hey, look, this is my scheme. This is what I do. And now let me get my head coaching job in the future. So to me, this seems like a very, a move almost like when the Ravens hired Gary Kubiak, right? When the Ravens got Gary Kubiak and had him for one year, uh, we obviously wanted him back for longer because that was probably the best offense Joe Flacco had ever been in. The best Joe Flacco has ever really played throughout a consistent stretch as far as a regular season was playing underneath a Gary Kubiak, right? So I feel like the same thing can happen with Eric Bannon. We get him for one, two years. 
and then he's off to have his next, off to have his first head coaching gig, right? Um, now <laughs> I would love to keep Eric for a long time, but if he play, if he's a good offensive coordinator here, he's destined to be a head coach somewhere else, right? That's that, that's just the fact of it. But for these one or two years, the Ravens were to get a guy like Eric Bieniemy. Um, this makes the offense automatically legitimate. This makes the offense a guy, uh, offense that can soar right back into that top five range. Um, and it takes a guy like Lamar Jackson's game to the next level, right? Lamar Jackson under Greg Roman in 2021 passed the ball pretty effectively. I know what the numbers are going to say. I know somebody brought it up to me yesterday. I think it was 16 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. But if you watch the games, watch the games, he forced some things, things like that happen. But he was throwing the ball better than ever. And I believe now he's a better passer than he was then. So now you get an offense that's going to incorporate the short game, that's going to get these wide receivers in space, that's going to make it so he has easy layup completions. He didn't get a lot of that in, in Greg Robles' offense. Every beginning, he draws it up for Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes has a lot of exceptional plays as well. Obviously, his talent level is amazing. But he gets a lot of layups and a lot of gimme throws, short passes, swing passes to get the guys in space. You can see that for Lamar Jackson here too, all right? So that kind of offense is known to be very effective in the NFL. You know, it, it's, it's a modern-day offense. And we got to think about the kind of player that Lamar Jackson is. He came from a pro-style offense, so he's, that, that's going to be no issue. But also, he's one of the most exciting quarterbacks in the NFL. He's an all-action QB. And the Ravens had him in a very, very slow-paced, methodical kind of offense, right? Where you would get to the line of scrimmage with six seconds on the on, on a play clock and have to have to rush everything, and that would lead to mistakes on that end, or you would get a delay a game, or whatever the case may be. Now with Airbnb, enemy, more of tempo, a quicker offense. Um, that's going to be a nightmare for defenses to have to go against, right? A Lamar Jackson in an up tempo, fast paced kind of offense. That's what I'm looking forward to. That's what I'm excited to see if the Ravens were to bring in a guy like Airbnb. enemy. And honestly, he has to be the number one candidate. He has to be at the very, very top of the list because if we're not talking about Airbnb enemy, we're talking about Todd Munkin, right? And I've done videos on Todd Munkin. I think he's a good offensive coordinator. But we got to be honest, his offenses have worked in college, and in the pros, they, the results have been mixed to not very good. And that's that, that's to be honest. Um, and then a guy like Dave Canales with the Seahawks, Geno Smith loves him, so that's, that, that's a huge plus. But he doesn't have any experience calling plays. Now, we know what Seattle offense looks like, but there's no guarantee that's going to be the exact offense he brings here, right? With Airbnb enemy, we know what we're going to get. He's a proven commodity in the NFL, and he's a guy that where the Ravens got to pay a lot of money to get him, you got to make it happen, right? This is the kind of move that is a great start to the offseason of trying to build a Super Bowl caliber team. So nailing the offensive coordinator uh, position is immense. It's going to, it's, that's going to be a domino effect. You get the offensive coordinator right, um, it get changed a lot in terms of quarterbacks, in terms of how you attack free agency, in terms of drafting. So um, if Airbnb enemy is truly, truly a candidate for the Ravens position, they got to do anything they can to make it happen. Um, so that's my thoughts on it, man. This is your boy Gabriel with another fan TV. I'm out.